Hello, lovely literature students. Welcome back to another exciting literature class. Today's class will begin at a very interesting book. It is titled Invincible Man by Ralph Ellison. We'll be looking at the introduction as well as the plot summary. The introduction and the plot summary. So, our behavioral objective during the course of this lesson, we're going to be understanding the background of the author, the background and setting of the novel, as well as the plot summary. Now, this is Ralph Ellison. It is Ralph Ellison, the author of the book, The Invincible Man. We're going to be looking at a brief background. Ralph Ellison was born in 1914 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and was raised largely in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He was the grandson of a slave. He was one of the foremost black educators in American history and became one of the nation's most important black colleges. He later served as the model for the black college attended by the narrator in The Invincible Man. This is the background of the author, Ralph Ellison. Now we're going to be looking at the setting of the novel. The setting of the novel. The setting is in the New Harlem neighborhood in New York City. The first seven chapters of Invisible Man take place in unidentified locations in the South, and the remainder of the novel takes place in the Harlem neighborhood of New York City. So this is the setting of the novel. Now we will be looking at the plot summary, the plot summary of the novel. The novel focuses on the narrator who believes that the title given to him as the Invincible Man is because he is not seen as a free-thinking man but through racial expectations of others. So we are seeing an Invincible Man who is not seen as a free-thinking black man but as someone who dwells on the expectations of others. Now. Let us understand the story, The Invincible Man. We will be looking at the story, The Invincible Man. So, the first part of the story, the prologue. In the prologue, we see the narrator speaking to us from his underground hideout in the basement, the cold cellar of a whites-only apartment building, where he's reminiscing about his life as an invincible man. So it is from the prologue that we understand who the invincible man is and what he is, what he represents in the story. Now, we have the introduction. In the introduction, he recalls his grandfather's haunting advice to live like a black man. His father, his grandfather advises him that he should never forget the fact that he is a black man and he will always remain a black man. Man. After his graduation from high school, he is called into participating in a brutal blindfolded boxing match, the Battle Royale, with nine of his classmates. This is done in front of the white students and the white population, further degrading the black people. And then we see that his award was a scholarship to a prestigious black college. In his junior year, he chauffeurs a wealthy trustee, Mr. Norton. So his scholarship to the black college was his way of coming out of this society to making a name for himself in the society. And while he was in his junior year, he decided, why don't I make a living while being in school? And he shall force a wealthy trustee, Mr. Norton. The narrator follows Mr. Norton's orders and takes him to visit two sites in the neighbor in the nearby black neighborhood, the cabin of Jim Trueblood, a local sharecropper and the golden day a distributable bar slash halfway house for shell-shocked world war one veterans now in taking the mr newton to jim trueblood he indirectly took him to the man who was responsible for mr newton's daughter's pregnancy which further enraged mr norton and then we see the rising action in the story where the narrator is expelled from his beloved college because he took mr norton to these two places and then he was sent to New York armed with several letters from the Dean, Mr. Dr. Bledsoe. He was sent with several letters to the, from the Dean, Dr. Bledsoe, and he believed that the letters were letters of recommendation. So anywhere he took the letter to, he noticed that he was always rejected. He did not know 
the contents of the 7 letters. But in reality, they were confirming his expulsion. So they gave him seven letters stating his expulsion. And everywhere he took the letter, thinking it was a letter of recommendation, he was indeed spoiling all his chances of being an important person in the society. Now, he arrives Harlem and experiences a whole new world because he's in a world where there's unlimited freedom for the blacks and he's wondering, he's like, am I in a strange place? Like, the blacks are walking around freely as if there is nothing going on. The blacks are just free and doing whatever it is they want to do. Unable to return to college, he gets a job in Liberty Paints, an optic white paint company that produces for the government. An industrial accident lands the narrator in the hospital where the doctors decide to use him since he's a black man. They use him as a lab rat for their shock experiment which causes him to lose his memory. So you see the issues the narrator had to go through being used as a lab rat. The unusual in industrial accidents that happened at his workplace was because a fellow black man was not happy with the fact that he was there. So the narrator is released and, in re and is recuperating in the home of a kind black woman, Mrs. Mary Rambert. She decides to take him in and take care of him since he lost his memory. And then the rising action continued. We see that the narrator rediscovers his passion for public speaking. He now realizes that he loves speaking in public, talking to the people. And then he joins the Brotherhood, which is an organization that was created to fight for the socially oppressed in the neighborhood. After his induction, he rises to the position of the leader in the Harlem division, but he encounters some troubles in the form of Ras the Extorter. The Exhorter. Ras the Exhorter is a black nationalist who fuels the Brotherhood seeing blacks as puppets for the white members agendas so he believes that the blacks are nothing but puppets for the white people's agenda in the brotherhood and the narrator is believing that okay why is Raz the exhorter here if his own ideology is not for the betterment of the blacks the brotherhood turns on the narrator and then when they turn on him they reassign him to the women's division in downtown and then he returns to Harlem because the brotherhood is floundering in the neighborhood and his fellow colleague and friend Todd Clifton is missing so you can see and then we're seeing the climax of the story the narrator finds Todd Clifton selling racist sample dots very ugly dolls that have all those that are racist they are black and they are portraying the black people in a very bad light the police arrive and an officer shoots and kills Clifton on the street ignored by the brotherhood the narrator organizes Clifton's funeral he decides to take it upon himself to organize Clifton's funeral and also gives a wonderful speech where he calls out Clifton as a very invincible man and even canonizing him as an individual of utmost respect and then the falling action in the story the narrator grows disillusioned with the brotherhood and their ideologies it's like the brotherhood is just existing in the black economy in the black neighborhood to suppress the activities of the black people how is a black organization be suppressing the activities of the blacks and pushing that of the whites it is so unheard of. And then, determined to destroy the organization from the inside, the narrator seeks for indicting information on them. We now see where he unwillingly plays right into the plans of the Brotherhood to turn power over to the violent, rusty exhorters who stage brutal riots all across Harlem. So, he is in the process of trying to get information, he the Brotherhood had already set a trap for him and he fell right into that trap. This way, the Brotherhood can now destroy the whole black community by leaving the community to destroy itself. So you see that the blacks were now fighting against each other. So they were destroying themselves. They were killing themselves with their own hands. That was the plan of the Brotherhood from the onset and that was what the narrator was trying to avoid. As the narrator rushes to Harlem, he is now confronted by Ras the Destroyer. Ras has changed his name from Ras the Exalter to Ras the Destroyer, who demands that he is the traitor and he should be killed. 
So you see it now. The person that has been defending them has now been branded the traitor and he should be lynched. Racing through the erupting violence, the narrator leaps into an uncovered manhole. A manhole is like a drainage you see in the middle of the road to take in excess water. So he leaps into that manhole. And then the resolution of the play, we see that the narrator hibernates on the ground but confesses that it is now time to rejoin the surface world again and see what has become of it since he was hiding in the manhole. Now, this is the story of the invincible man. He is the invincible man because he was the one fighting a cause that no one knew him about he was just fighting a cause that he didn't even know he like you see in the beginning where we see the plot summary we see that invincible man is seeing himself as a free thinking he's he's he sees himself as a free thinking man but people are not seeing him like that they are not seeing him like that he's people are seeing him through the racial expectations of others people are analyzing him based on the racial expectations of others as seen in the story that was just narrated so that's the story of the book the invincible man by ralph ellison now we will be doing our usual evaluation evaluation why does the narrator refer to himself as an invincible one why do you think he refers to himself as the invincible man so lovely students we've come back to the end of our lovely class on the introduction and plot summary of the book titled the invincible man by ralph ellison in our next class we're going to be looking at the themes and the style in this lovely book so i'll see you in our next class